Good morning. Hello. We are back in the studio Saturday morning. Um, of course, we were supposed to be at the knitting and uh, not knitting sewing for pleasure show. I need to get that right, don't I? Freudian slip there. Um, so yes, we were supposed to be at the knitting and stitching show this week, this weekend, but of course it's a no show. So we're here in the studio. Um, the last couple of days we've been going over a couple of uh, specific things with people, but today I thought, right, okay, hit me with it. Ask me anything you want to know and I will do my very best to reply and answer. Um, a few people have sent in um, things already, which is brilliant, and I will try and answer as many things as I can on the, as they come through. I see them popping up here and I will see them coming up on my down here as well. Um, so the ones that have emailed in so far, I'm going to try and do those first so that we can wait for people to kind of catch up and see what's going on. I know Luanne has said, how can you afford beautiful fabric when most of your work is cancelled? <laughs> Sweetheart, I just know how you feel. It's absolute pants out there at the moment, isn't it? But at least we are all in the same boat together. I've had to be um, comforting my daughter because her A-level exams have been cancelled. She had her last day at school ever yesterday. Um, and it just feels like they've kind of fallen off a cliff, really. No prom, no kind of build up to the last day, no excitement about post exam mayhem. So yeah, I really feel for everybody at the moment, but we are all in the same boat. We're gonna to have to try and model this together, aren't we? Um, it's amazing some of the really cool things that people have been doing to help each other out and their neighbors and stuff like that. We've got people in our road who are self-isolating. So um, there's a brilliant thing going around. I don't know if you've seen it, most community um, notice, but I know it is sad, sad for everybody, isn't it? Um, most community notice boards or Facebook pages or something like that will have a little printout that you can do. What you do is write your name on it, um, what address, where you live, your phone number, and what you can help out with people um, doing. So whether they need shopping, <laughs> not that there's a lot in the shops at the moment. God, I went into um, my local supermarket yesterday. Nada. No loo roll, no, even the fresh veg have gone. Seriously, what is going on with people? I really don't know. Um, Luanne, you have a stash. Yes, I can well believe that, actually. <laughs> knowing, knowing you, I think yeah, you've got a, quite a bit to work through. Haven't you? You've got to keep you going, so that'll be good. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah, I think that's great, actually. Oh, lots of coat. Morning, Sharon. Hi. Are you watching from your she shed this morning? A little bit of peace and tranquility for you in there. That's good. Um, so yeah, if we can help people in any way, shape or form, then we absolutely need to do that, don't we? Oh, Leanne's there. Hi, Leanne. Both guys are working from home today. Brilliant. So, down to the question. So what have people been asking? One of the first things we had through was um, about bias binding. And somebody, let me just see who it was now, who was asking about that. Uh, where are we? Ah, Karen. No? Siobhan. Right, yes, Siobhan's been asking about bias binding, particularly on the cape dress. Now, morning everybody. Hi, Jill. Hi, Jo. Um, yeah, the Kate. Here we go. Now this is quite a nice technique to get to grips with because you're repeating it and it's a really lovely way to finish off anything as well. So a couple of things you want to think about. Bias binding. There are two kind of different ways, basic ways really. Um, one is whether you see the bias binding like we've done here and the other version, the other way of doing it is where it's tucked inside. So it's invisible kind of, well you can still see the row of stitching but morning Alison. Morning Denise, um, so you can still see a bit of the stitching. But what we do on the cake is actually make a feature of it so that you can see the bias binding. So that's what we've got here. Now, a couple of different things with bias binding. So I'm gonna bring you over to the table. Um, let's see if we can make sure that that's working. There we go. And I'm gonna show you. Hi, 
Heather. There we are. So we've got different kinds of bias binding. Now this stuff is shop bought stuff, which is absolutely fine. Actually, oh, I can do it so that you can see me as well. Here we go, back up to me. Lovely. So this is normal kind of shop bought bias binding that we've got plenty of in stock here as well. Now what you'll notice on here, if I hold that up to the camera, there we go, you've got quite short, little narrow kind of seam allowance bits here. So that's kind of shop bought stuff. Now I've made some myself, which actually is really easy to do. And we've got a blog on our, a tutorial on our blog that shows you how to make it. Um, would, could you, should you always put fabric before sewing? Just always a good rubbing fabric. To be honest, um, pre-washing stuff, I don't do it. But having said that, um, if you're gonna make things up in denim or a craft cotton fabric, then um, I probably would pre-wash. Um, actually, let me see if I can just see more of that question. Oops, there we go. Uh, also, look, Kate dress half. Oh, Kate, little Katie goes down to age three. If we get below that, you're dealing with nappies, which is a nightmare. So you're bulking and what have you. But pre-washing, yes. Um, the Robin fabric that you've ordered, I probably wouldn't worry about because it's uh, a fashion fabric. So it would have been pre-treated anyway, so you should be fine. Um, anything that's um, something like a viscose, what they tend to do is they kind of go, like that when they're washed and then when you kind of let them dry and press them and iron them again they kind of relax so don't panic if it comes out a bit kind of tight out of the washing machine it will kind of relax back into its shape again um, i would definitely pre-wash denim though always because it, you will get a certain amount of shrinkage there so that's that one take that one off the list hope that answers your question emma um so this is binding that i've made now I just had some scrap fabric and I used a really cool little technique where you kind of cut it into triangles and squish it back together again. Um, and then you can make all your bias out of that. There is a brilliant tutorial on our website and you can see how to do that. So that's really cool. So this one I've made, and if you can see, if I can show you the two, you can see the differences. So one's got slightly bigger kind of seam allowance bit and one's slightly narrower. Now, I'm making a fuss about this because it's important to help you place your binding on the fabric. So, uh, the twist on the Cordelia. Yeah, now, actually, Luann, we're gonna do that as a proper online course because I know that it takes the people a while to get their head around it. Once you've got it, it's pretty straightforward but that's one of the ones that we're going to be doing as an online course so you'll be able to go through everything start to finish and we'll show you lots of different tips and tricks with that one as well so that's good i just need time luckily because we're not actually running the workshops now we've got time every cloud so that's really good um small denim check for amelia dress how much fabric do i need to please about two and a half meters Amelia, unless you're going to be doing um, a larger size but what I can do is um, Leanne will have a look you should be able to see it and hopefully Leanne you'll be able to see the um, the pattern info on the back there and she'll post it for you okay but about two and a half two and a half to three and you'll be absolutely fine so we've got now this is the reason why we need to make sure that we know and there's a lovely word here it's called a flange I know, almost as good as moist. It's better as a word. But this is important because we need to know where we're going to put the binding and how we're going to attach it. So this is where we're going to need to get down onto the table. So I'm hoping I can show you this. There we are. So I've got my little kind of curved bit here. And I've got my binding. Now normally you would have a 1.5 seam allowance. So if I just grab a pencil, and I can kind of mark that on here. So normally you'd have a 1.5 seam allowance. So that would be going around here. Actually, I'm gonna eyeball it because it's gonna be quicker. So that would be your seam allowance. So what you would need to do then is to make sure that the crease of your binding sits on that stitching line. So this is where 
you can either make your own and have a slightly wider bit here and that will make it easier to sit on that stitching line for you because if you've got a really narrow one here so it's not just a question of lining up the raw edges you're going to need to make sure that the crease of your binding sits actually on your stitching line so that's really important now again you can kind of eyeball or you can mark it all in first what you could do as well is actually stitch or tr just trim your garment back if you wanted to. So depending on whether you find it easier to trim before or afterwards, it makes no difference. But what you want to do is to line that up. Now, if you want to have a visible binding, what I'm going to suggest is that we actually attach it first of all to, hi Mark, how are you? Um, is that we attach the binding to the wrong side of the fabric. Now that's quite, you kind of think, hang on a minute, that's a bit A about T. So I'm going to show you why. Now if I pin binding to the wrong side here, um, I will show you in a sec. There, so we've attached that bit there. Now, if I fold it over, when I'm on the right side, I've already got my nice neat edge here, and I can just fold that over. I'm covering over the stitching that I would have done on um, that side. Morning, Sue. And you won't see it. So now I can top stitch from the right side, and I'm gonna have a nice neat row of sewing here so that you can um ah you're you're wrestling with bias binding are you mark i know i feel your pain i really do straight lines so far though or oh, that's okay so the only reason that we do it on the bias really is so that it will go around curves so that makes it much easier to bend and get into position so i'll do you a quick demo because it is quite nice to have a an idea of what to do. Now I'm pretending that my stitching line here is the same width as the flange on my piping just to make it really easy. So what I'm going to do is take you over to the sewing machine now. So come with me. Oops. There we go. Hi Sean, how are you? There we go. If we can get a bit further over. There we are. Um, I'm going to try and scoot in. Now this Sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Oh, there we go. That's better. So what I'm doing on the machine now, I'm not going to bother to pin, which I know kind of makes a lot of people freak out, but actually it does make it so much easier. So I've got my piping lined up here and I can see the crease that marks the kind of flange part of the, of the piping, of the bias binding. So there we go. I'm just going to line that up now. So I'm stitching straight through the crease here. And all I'm going to do is just stretch the binding very slightly. But I'm using my pin fingers as pins. So I'm literally going to sew about an inch. And then we'll move it round. So as soon as it comes away, I'm then going to hold it with my fingers and stretch it round. Now, the reason I'm not pinning is because it's slightly stretchy. If you pin it in place, it's going to move when you sew it. So it's easier to just use your fingers as pins and just keep going all the way around. So you're just stretching it slightly and just co coaxing it into that curved shape. There we go. So now that wants to create a natural little kind of smile. It's already, because we've stretched it a little bit, it's already wanting to go over the edge now. So what we can do is just fold that back over. Now, in an ideal world, you'll press this. So I'm just going to finger press that around there just to make sure that it's doing what it should do. But 
you can press it properly. And then we can fold that over. Now this is where you may want to pin because you might want to make sure that everything's sitting in exactly the right place. So instead of where you would normally pin vertically like that, we've got to think about what the pin is actually doing. So at the moment, the pin is just holding that little bit in place. Okay, if we've got it pinned like that, it's just holding that little section in place. If we pin it along in the same direction that we're stitching, it's holding a lot more of that section, a, lot, a bigger section in place. So pin in the direction that you're sewing and make sure that your pin head is towards you. And that way it's easy to take the pins out as you go. So we can fold that over. Now, people don't like top stitching and I kind of get that, but there is a nice way of doing it where you basically kind of find out where you give yourself a guide. So what you can do is line this up first. You can either eyeball it. Um, oh, thank you. That's, yeah, lovely. I'm hoping at, <laughs> Leanne's going to be answering things. And if, um, if I miss, uh, oh, hello, if I miss something, ask me again, because it's only coming up in my little feed. Um, and I'll try and make sure that I answer anything uh, and if I don't we'll do it again and we'll cover it over then okay so what I can do is if I am using so on here I'm going to give myself a guide so the center of my foot is clear plastic and the edge is a metal so I'm using the line where it goes from metal to plastic as my guide there so that's the bit I'm running on the edge of my bias binding and now I can actually click <coughs> the needle into the right place. So I'm using my foot as a guide and then swinging my needle over so it's in the right place. Okay, so now we can drop that down. Oh, I might go and go up one. There we go. So now it's in the right place. So it's easy for me to follow. So all I'm doing is following. So I'm using the guide. And what I'm doing is I'm not looking at the needle. I'm actually looking here to make sure that the edge of my binding is hitting the guide on the foot in the right place before. Then I know the needle's automatically going to be in the right place. that is really close to the edge holding everything down in place that's a, little, a nice little sample there for doo -doo, there we go have you checked the bobbin <laughs> yes yes I have Sharon yes I have checked the bobbin and it is full today if you were watching the other day when was it on Thursday um, I ran out of bobbin which is a real rookie error. Anyway, so I hope that has covered the binding for you, Siobhan. Uh, let's go back up, ooh, back up to me. I'm doing Keith Floyd again. Um, there we are. This is all a bit kind of um, suck it and see, really. Uh, let's go back out again. Oh, we're doing this is later. Cool. There we go. Yeah. No, I want to trying to get rid of the zoom now. You don't really want me that close, do you? Oh, no, that's... Oh. Sorry. Technical issues here. There we go. Oh, that's better. There I am. Lovely. Hello. I need a larger glass of wine to be Keith Floyd. Yes, I do. Oh, do you remember him? I loved him. I thought it was brilliant, actually. So that's bias binding. I hope that's kind of solved the things about stitching around the curve. So basically, check the width of your seam allowance on your binding and make sure that that sits on your stitching line. Um, if you need to trim it down first, do that first. But 
make sure that you're making sure, if you like, that the bias binding is stitching on the correct stitching line around your seam. Stitch from the wrong side first, and then fold your binding over to the right side, and then you can top stitch and get a much neater finish there. So that's a really good one. So that's bias binding. Now, what was next? Uh, let's see, um, zips. Oh, no, that was a tricky one. Um, people get really scared about zips, but you really, really don't have to. Um, we've got a lovely tutorial on our website that shows you how to put in a concealed zip. Some people call them invisible zips. They're not because they are there. They're a concealed zip, and they kind of look like they're part of the seam. And we do a really nice way, which is a production way of finishing. Um, oh, if you're thinking of upgrading your machine, what features would you recommend? Experienced sewer and mainly, oops, let's just make sure I can see more of that. It's a dress my phone for, okay. Um, one thing I absolutely love is a knee lift. Sounds a bit weird, but it's like, like a kind of a handle thing. You can plug it into your machine and then you just use your knee to kind of lift the foot up and down, which leaves your hands free. Um, industrial sewing machines have them and they've brought them into the domestic market. I love that feature, that would be a really good one. Um, I'd also make sure that you get a really strong motor. So if you're just doing dressmaking, um, I'd probably go for something that hasn't necessarily got the bells and lights on it, but it's got a really good motor that will be able to cope with lots of different layers of fabric. So if you're making jeans and stuff like that. Uh, um, ooh, I, these questions are coming through so quickly, I can't see them. Um, let me do, I wonder if I can get it up on my laptop so I can see them. Um, let me have a look and see what's occurring. I don't know whether I can actually see it on my uh, laptop. But um, zip instructions. Oh, thank you, Mark. Yes, that's what I'm kind of going to go through now, actually. So let's have a quick look at zips. Now, this is the method that's in my book for... Um, putting in a trouser zip. Now, which are, some people think are really complicated, but they're actually not. Oh, Sharon's got a knee lift result. That's a really good one, actually. Um, so these are the Porsche trousers. And they have got, um, let me see if I can move that a little bit. There we go. So they've got a proper fly front on here. So that's a nice way of finishing. The Porsche instructions will take you through everything step by step as well. Um, but what I'm going to do is show you some of the things that you might need to be aware of when you're doing um, a trouser zip. The, um, there is also another way of putting a trouser zip in on our Porsche as Jeans website um, tutorial on the blog. So that shows you a slightly different way of doing it. Um, I know, Mark, they are bad, aren't they, really? Yes. So the way I'm going to show you now, if you come down, I might try and do a little bit of a zoom in again. Um, I've got samples. These are actually the samples that I did for the book. So it's easier to show you a step by step kind of way rather than me actually doing it, if you see what I mean, because you'll be able to see them a bit better. Um, oh, you're being daft. No, Mary, go for it. Knee lift every time. If you could do it, get away with it. Absolutely do it. So let's have a quick look at the, so, oh, I'm not trying to do it, I want to talk to you at the same time, really, which is a bit weird. Okay, so, what we want to do is to make sure that uh, your opening is going to be big enough. Now, it doesn't matter what size your zip is, as long as your zip is bigger than your opening, or the same kind of size. Um, if it is bigger, if you've got, if you've got like a, I don't know, a seven inch gap, and you've got an eight inch zip, that's absolutely fine. Even if you're putting in jeans, you can shorten those trouser zips as well. Um, so what you want to do to make sure is, I would always shorten your zip from the top and not the bottom, because the top bit is gonna get included in um, the waistband or the facing or something like that. But the bottom stopper is the one that you want to concentrate on. So on your pattern pieces, you'll have a marker. Now this one's worn out a bit but you'll have, oops, you'll have a point on the base of your crotch seam. So on here, what you'd want to do is to make sure that you're marking that point on 
the base of the crotch. So that's quite important. Then what I would do is neaten each section of the crotch seam first. It makes it so much easier. Now, whether you've got an overlocker, which is fantastic, if you haven't, do it another kind of way, do a zigzag, or you can do a mock overlock stitch or something like that on your sewing machine, but neaten off the crotch seam first. It does make it a lot easier. So you've got that little section. So all you want to do is if you have your, your kind of crotch, your fly opening mark there, just make sure that you're neatening just a little bit past it, okay? And that keeps everything nice and tidy. You're also going to need your um, fly facing and your fly shield, or sometimes they call it um, a fly extension. Same kind of difference. Now the important thing is you make sure you get them around the right way. Now this sample is made up for the fly to open on the right. Now I'm right-handed, so I tend to have my zips doing up that way. Um, if you're left-handed, you could do it. I can't, you know, I really can't remember which way around it is supposed to be for blokes or women, because to be honest, I don't actually think it matters that much. I think it's whatever you prefer. So if you're left-handed, you might want to open it on the left-hand side. I'm right-handed, so I open it up on the right-hand side, so that's fine. So you need to make sure that you've got your facing bit is going to, so if this is my right-hand side of my trouser, this is the left-hand side of my trouser, right? I beg your pardon. So my fly is gonna open that way. I need to make sure that the facing is a mirror image of my left front. Does that make sense? It should do. You'll kind of see as we go along. So you'll make sure that you've got that way around. So if your fabric's got a right and a wrong side, you need to make sure that you've kind of got a mirror image so it goes behind the side that you want to open, okay? You're also going to need your fly extension or your fly shield, and that's usually a double layer, so it doesn't matter which way around it goes. Then what we want to do is to sew up that section of the crotch seam. So that little bit, so we've neatened it all already, and we've just stitched up to the mark there that's for the fly opening, okay? That's the next bit. Now what we want to do is to attach your fly facing. So we're gonna fold down. So if we've got, there we go, that's the front of your trousers and we want it to open that way. So what I'm gonna do is to fold it together and then let that drop down. And then you can see that we're attaching the fly facing on here. So what I'm doing is I'm, now your fly, facing should be longer than your opening because we want this little bit as a seam allowance to kind of neaten everything off later. So but I'm all I'm doing is sewing up to the opening. So I'm sewing up to the other side of my trouser front. So if I fold you can see how that's going to fit. So your fly facing will kind of just flip out a little bit like that okay. Then what we want to do is to press the fly facing over so that the seam allowance and the fly are going all in the same direction. And then you want to do is your under stitching. So we've got that on the next one. I love this step by step, it's so cool. So here, we've pressed it and under stitched it. So you can see what I mean by under stitching. So under stitching, again, kind of does what it says on the tin. It's holding the fabric underneath so that when we press it back the right way it's not going to bounce out from underneath and we're going to see it. So we're going to press that back now so that's going to give you that sort of front that left hand side of the the fly opening. Now we want to start attaching the zip. So what we want to do here and this is quite important actually so I'm going to make sure that you can see this properly let me just tip that down. There we go. So what I've got here is I've got my zip now right side down on top of the facing, but my zip stopper is a good centimetre, centimetre and a half probably, away from the 
end of the opening. Now that's quite key because we don't want that in the way when we're stitching the fly shape on the, right, the side, left hand side of the fly opening. So what we want to do then is to make sure that that edge is nice and close and we're going to flip up that little tab bit there so you've got the longer tab the tail end bits of your um, zipper tape and we want to flip that up so that it's not in the way again and then we're going to stitch that down so that it's nice and secure onto that fly facing okay that's the next stage There we go. So what we've done on here is we've actually machine basted that one down. So we've got that one out of the way and then we double stitched this with two rows. There we go. So we've got two rows this side and we've got basting that side. And what we've also done is machine basted the line of the fly. So that fly top stitching. So you've got a good guide there for later. Hi Suzanne, how are you? Um, so what we've done, basically, I'm going to go back over that again. We've stitched, stitched this bit flat first, and then we've folded it back so that we can then do the basting around that curve of the fly shape. Okay. Then what we're going to do is top stitch following that guide. So I've actually used the, the basting line and followed that and done all my top stitching first. So it's all out of the way. Now there are different ways of doing this, but I found this to be one of the easiest. So I've done my top stitching first. So that side of the fly is already done. Now what we want to do is to fold. So here we go. So that that's your fly all nice and stitched there. And then what we want to do is to fold that bit out of the way so we can see this left bit. So we're gonna undo the basting stitch that held that in place, flip it back, and then we're going to take the fly shield or the fly extension, which is the double bit, and that's gonna get put underneath. So we're gonna attach this bit onto this side, the open, the unstitched side of the zip. That goes in there. And then just machine that down. So all I've done is just machine that down there as well. So that's attached onto there first. You could do the next stage in, in all in one bit, but I think actually it's easier to separate it. So also on the right hand side of the trouser, remember I'm doing my fly opening with the right hand side. And I think Facebook's probably flipped it over as well. But I've pressed under just over half a centimetre because we want to offset that centre front fold. So normally you'd have two bits mixing up at the centre and then you'd open it out like a book kind of thing. But what we want to do is to have one tucked underneath so that when you open that bit, you're not going to see all of it nice and, and flat. You're not going to see all of the, the zip underneath. So I've pressed that over. Now that bit will sit on your zip. Now here we go for another one. So now what we've done, if we've opened it out, so this bit now is attached to the left hand side. So where we had it done up and what we've done on here, okay, if you see that, so we've got the fly shield, fly extension attached to the right hand side of the zip. And then what we've done is we've attached the right hand side of the trouser through those layers as well. So that's what this is now. So you've got the trouser opens like that. So that's your zip and you've got your fly facing underneath here, which is supporting your zip and you've got your fly extension or the fly shield coming out from underneath the right hand side of the zip. Okay. Again, the instructions will talk you through all of this step by step. So now what we want to do is to 
something off. Nice nails as always, thank you. But they do need doing, so I'm gonna get them done later on this afternoon. While I still can, while we still allow it out. So what we want to do here, now again, this is another little trick here. So when we're attaching this fly extension and the zip, you're not gonna get all the way down inside here. But that doesn't matter because what we've done is stitch a little tiny bar in stitch across that the opening point. So where your um, the gap of your zip opening your bottom stitching is, that's where you'll do that little tiny row of there we go. Can you see little tiny row of satin stitches there? Oops. There we go. That acts as a really good stopper and tidies everything up. It just makes it, it just takes the pressure off that bottom part of it there as well. And that's it. That's how you do a fly. Well, let me come back up again. There we go. I don't know why all of a sudden it's got really bright. Actually, we've got quite bright. It's quite sunny outside today. So that's the, the kind of step by step. So basically what you want to do is neaten your crotch seam off first, sew up the crotch seam, attach your fly facing to whatever side you want to open, whether it's the left side or the right side. Then you want to make sure that your zip's in the right place and just flick those little tail bits up. Make sure that your zip stopper is about a good centimetre, centimetre and a half above your opening. It doesn't matter too much because it's gonna get closed anyway. So it just means that that stopper, that little metal bit or that solid plastic bit is gonna be out of the way when you do your top stitching. So that keeps it nice and neat. The other thing you can do is because on the back, you've got these two bits. There we go. No, wrong one. That's it. So on the back here, once you've stitched it all down, you've got it nice and neat, but those two bits are kind of open. So what you can have is a stitch that's just through the fly facing seam allowance and your fly shield or extension and just capture those two down together. And that means that when you open your zip, it's not gonna kind of flap everywhere because it's nice and secure through here. So that's a nice little finishing off bit too. So again, crotch, neaten, fly facing, put your zip in, fold it back, attach your fly guard or fly shield, fly extension, whatever you want to call it, and then you can do your top. It makes it so much easier. I hope that's clear. I know it's a little bit of a kind of a rushed one, but um, if you get my book, then it's all in there. Hopefully that'll be really good. I don't kind of flash about the book really because I was asked to do it as a project quite a while ago, so I don't get anything from it but I know that Amazon have got it and it's quite a good one. It's got lots and lots of techniques in there, so if you want to get a copy, that would be really good. We have lots of zips in stock. And actually what I think would be a really good idea is to, um, because let's face it, people are gonna have time on their hands now. Why not start making yourself a techniques or processes folder? and have a go at some of these things that you might not have done in the, you know, in the past. Have a little look and see how to do a concealed zip and have a go at one. You've got some scrap fabrics or bits of calico um, and try these different techniques at home and then keep all the samples, make some notes, take some photos and keep all that together so you're creating your own technical library, which is what I had to do when I was a fashion student many, many years ago. I had umpteen folders of loads and loads of different processes and techniques. And actually, that was brilliant. Unfortunately, they got nicked when I was teaching, but that's another story. Um, but it was really, really useful as a reference to go back to because you would have done it yourself. And it's brilliant looking at a book and finding ways of doing things, but there's no substitute really for having a go. Um, and it's interesting, most people who are kind of creatives fall into kind of one of two camps, or actually it's both. Most people are visual learners or kinesthetic learners. Kinesthetic just means that you learn by doing. 
Um, I am definitely one of those. I have to see something and then do it in order for it to kind of sink in. A lot of other people kind of learn by listening. I'm not one of those. I used to switch off and fall asleep in lectures. Um, I have to be doing. So it's quite a nice way to reinforce your own learning by just having a go. So we have got zips if you want to have a go at those at home. We've got plenty of those in stock. Um, have a go at the Porsche as trousers version as well because that's quite a nice way of doing things. It's a little bit more kind of um, home sewing version way of doing something but it, it works and you have to find your own way of doing things really. So that's a nice one. So we've done the zips there. That's really excellent. If anybody else wants to ask anything, do I'm going to kind of try and scroll back now and see. Oh no, I can't see anything. There we go. Yeah, everything's mirrored. I know, I'm really sorry. Um, great tips, everyone. Thank you. Uh, nobody else has asked me for anything. Um, oh, yes, Bianca Hack. That's a good one. We've been asked about that, about that by several people, actually. So I'm going to show you uh, the Bianca on the stand. There we go. So we've got the Bianca dress here. Let me move that out of the way. So Bianca, she is an oversized garment. So she's easy to wear. She fits over lots of layers, that kind of thing. So you don't have to um, wear a coat. This is more like a kind of coatigan, coat cardigan kind of thing. Um, but she's roomy enough so you can wear a nice big thick jumper underneath. But if you're quite slim, a frame so you've got quite narrow shoulders there is something you can do which will kind of lift the shoulders back on again so I've stuck her on our little petite dummy and as you can see it wants to kind of there's there's gapage here so on the back here it feels like the whole thing just wants to come in and actually that's one of the really easy things that you can do is just kind of pinch it out down the center for how much you feel like you want to bring it in by um, and again, we've got a blog on our, a tutorial on our blog that shows you how to do this. So it is literally just a question of pinching out however much you want to take out, opening out that seam, so just undoing that little bit of overlocking and restitching it. So it, make sure you're folding everything in half so where all the side seams match up, the hems match up, the armholes match up. You can put one arm inside the other and that helps to get it all nice and flat. That way then you can measure how much you want to take off and you just literally overlock or stitch that bit out. And you can do the same on your, so on your centre back pattern piece, you would just measure how much you pinched out here and then mark your line in. So you're taking your centre back in by however much you've pinched. And that makes it really easy to, to alter. Um, you do the same on the back neck for the collar. So because you want this whole thing is just one long straight line. So whatever you're taking out here, you'd want to take out here as well. So you're going to reduce the width of the collar so that when you sew the two back together again along the neck seam, it's all going to fit. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. So pinch out the back, however much you want to take out and either sew it or alter the pattern so that the pattern's reduced by the amount that you've pinched there as well. The other thing that you can do with Bianca is some people don't like it quite so full at the front. So you can reduce the waterfall. So on here, if you think about what shape this is, it's basically just a rectangle. There we go. So it's just a kind of a rectangle with a sleeve in it. So if you want to reduce the height of it, you can take off some across the top here. Just slide that off. So you can just literally cut that, fold that off like that and or alter the pattern. The same here, because you've got that real double kind of breasted overlap, if you don't want it that much, you can reduce this front edge. So this centre center front kind of leading edge, you just reduce that down as well. So you can fold that back or you can cut your pattern piece, remove the extra that you don't want on there. 
Again, both of these are on our blog and they're really easy to do. So this is actually quite a nice thing. People get scared about kind of altering things and stuff like that. One of the easiest things to do is actually hold the pattern up against you. So if you think you need to do an alteration, you can do it on the paper and then kind of hold it up or pin the bits of paper together and drape them over you so you can flip the collar down and then you can see how wide it's going to be, how much fabric it's going to take and whether that's whether you, you the look that you want to go for. So it's kind of, you don't have to make the whole thing up from start to finish and then decide at the end that you don't like it because it's too much. You can try it on and judge things as you're going along. That's really, really key actually. And that's one of the best ways of getting something that you know you want to wear. So that's really cool. So those are the two things that we've covered there with, um, that's Bianca. Now, um, at the moment, we've got uh, free postage and packing. So while we are, well, we would have been at the show, obviously you guys would have been coming along and having a chat and buying stuff and taking it away. We can't do that at the moment, unfortunately. So we've decided that whilst the show is on or would have been on, we're gonna do free postage and packing. So if you do want to have a go at making Bianca, now is the time to get your boiled wool because we're gonna send it out to you. Um, we have this fabric in stock, but I want to show you something else, which is really lovely. So I'm just gonna bring the camera around a bit. I'm gonna grab this. Now this came in the other day. I love it. It's, um, I don't, if you've seen, oh, there we go, so you can see it. I love this, oh, it's so nice. Sharon's going, oh, no, it's itchy. It's not, it's not itchy at all. It's beautifully soft and it just feels gorgeous. It's a wool um, and synthetic mix. So if you are allergic to wool, mm, it might not be right, but there are other things that you can do. I absolutely adore this. Now, the thing with this is, I don't know if you've seen the photos of the Bianca on the website. Um, it shows, it's a kind of a, a two-tone kind of gray fabric that's a little bit kind of like this. This is lovely because it's got a slightly darker inside. Look at that. Would that not look amazing as a Bianca? I think this is just gorgeous. Um, I made my, one for my mum last year for Mother's Day in a beautiful kind of cerise boiled wool. Um, and because she's let her hair go now and she's properly, properly white, it looks amazing. Um, and so with that, with her gorgeous pink coat, she looks fab, she really does. Um, and I really can't, and I'm absolutely gutted that I'm not gonna be able to get to see her this weekend. Um, shame. But we need to keep people safe. So why not make your mum a Bianca? She will love you for it. Minded. She loves me anyway, but I think she loves me even more when I made her a coat. So um, I think this is fantastic actually. It's beautiful. It's 150 wide. You'll only need two and a half meters, whatever size you make. Um, and it's a brilliant one to get to grips with. So we've also got a tutorial on our website that shows you how to do the neck bit on the overlocker because that's the tricky bit that people go for. Um, but actually, give it a go. It really isn't that difficult. And if you're worried about it, you can always go back over it with the sewing machine as well. So it's not a tricky one to do. Um, so don't forget, we've got free postage of packing at the moment. Um, oh, just another, where is it? Something's pinged up on my laptop. There we go. Oh, okay. Right. How do you change sizes? Oh, and somebody else asked earlier on how to um, trace off. The easiest way to trace off a pattern is um, if you want to keep your master copy. Now it depends on what kinds of um, paper you want to use. I'm just gonna nip around the, behind the camera and grab some paper. Right here, this is paper that um, I use for pattern cutting. It's called Dot and Cross because it has got dots and crosses on it. 
Now, the reason I like this paper is that it's, um, it's about 30 GSM, which is the paper weight. So it means it's light enough to be able to see through, but it's still firm enough to be able to use, which is a really nice one. So it's a little bit lighter than our the paper that we print our patterns on. Um, the other reason I like it is because it's got the dots and the crosses on. So although they are about an inch apart, they still give you the really nice straight lines so you can get right angles. Because when you're tracing things off, you wanna make sure that you get your right angles straight because otherwise you're gonna have slightly wibbly clothes. Um, and we sell that by the meter. So if you want to order that, I think that should be up online. Um, hopefully one of the girls will find the link. If not, I'll stick it up later. Um, and that's quite useful. It's 36 inches wide, but you can order as much as you like. Um, and it's a brilliant one. So what I would use is that. Some people prefer to use what they call Swedish tracing paper, which is kind of like, it's a bit like interfacing, really. It's like a kind of a bonded paper thing that you can stitch, which is brilliant if you want to trace off your pattern and then you can baste it all together and, and try it on to see if it fits, which is a really cool way of doing it. Um, other people just use newsprint, if you can get hold of that. Anything that's fairly lightweight, you should be able to trace your patterns off with no problem at all. Um, the other thing that somebody asked me earlier on that I spotted was, um, how to uh, go between sizes. Because most patterns these days are multi-size, um, what we can do is you've got, so and people aren't one size all the way up and down. So um, you might be, I don't know, a size 14 on the bust and a 16 on the, 16 on the hip or something like that. So there's a really nice way of actually using that. Um, and I can show you on there we go so this is the Paulina that pattern that I was using yesterday and what I can show you again if we go down I'm going to move the camera now so you can have a look and see what we're doing on the table there we go so I've got a pattern here that's got all of the different sizes on it now if I wanted to go let me grab a pen, there we are, and there we are. So if I wanted to go from um, an eight to a 10, say, um, all I do is I've got my hip line, say, is gonna be where that notch is. And on my waist, I want to go, so I'm just going to basically take it from, from an eight on this line, I'm gonna take it out to a 10 on that line so you're just literally crossing over your tram lines so that's all you want to do and then if you want to come back out again or if you want to go for example you want to nip something in so you could go from one size into another and then back out again So you're just going over the tram lines. That's all you want to do. I don't know if you can see that again. Um, again, I think there was a blog on our, a tutorial on our blog. I don't know why I keep getting that around the wrong way. Um, to show you what to do with that. But it's basically, you just want to make sure that you're rounding off. So where you are going over. So if I've got that, I'm just going to round off. There we go. So if you're thinking about the shape of the body, we don't go as a, we haven't got points. So I would be blending it in, curving it off, taking it back out to blend in with the next size and then also curving it off again so that we've got a nice smooth, kind of very elongated, stretched out wave. But that's the easiest way of doing it. Oops, I'm gonna come back up to me now so I can see you. There we go. So the easiest way to kind of cross, oops, I don't know why we've got, why it's so bright today. Oh no, that's, oh, that's better. There we go. The, the technical things, technical issues. Um, so basically that's an easy way. So if you've got your tram lines 
oh yesterday when we did the neck band you overlocked them let me just see oh, I've just got a question come up there we go um, where is it let's have a look oops no technical things are brilliant when they work aren't they There was a question from Barbara just now, and I'm trying to see if I can find it, um, about overlocking that I did yesterday. Um, no, I can't find it. I will try and find it. I'll find it for you, Barbara, don't worry, and I will answer it for you. I couldn't see the whole of the question, so I'll go back through the questions when I've finished and I will, um, I'll type you an answer, okay? So, um, yes, that's brilliant. I think, I hope I've answered some of your questions there today. Um, I'm going to be uh, live again tomorrow, quite what I should be talking about, I don't know. I'll decide, probably all kinds of things. Um, and uh oh charlie's watching hello are you down in cornwall now oh yeah <laughs> oh, that's good barbara oh there we go let's see now leanne has just asked the question um yesterday when i did the neck band <coughs> you overlocked them do you need top stitch as well yes well i would probably top stitch or oh cover stitch um, my voice is so soothing. Oh no, I hope I'm not pulling you to sleep. <laughs> I would, well, when I finish that Paulina later on today, I'm going to cover stitch around the neckline. I probably wouldn't worry too much about the cuffs because you kind of want those to kind of come over and, and just sit into the cuff. But the neckband, I definitely would top stitch. It just holds everything flat, so yeah. Can I put a link in that for the pink fabric? Yes, Leanne, it's, um, or Sharon, whoever's going to do it, or I'll do it in a sec, don't worry. It's the, um, it's a new fabric, and Sharon, I think Sharon put it up online yesterday, so you should be able to find it, and we'll put the link in there for you, don't worry. That's good. Um, I've just got back, yes, he's just shouting at me from Cornwall. He's had to drive down and pick up Seamus, who's at uni down in Falmouth, so... Luckily tonight, I will have all of my babies at home tonight, thankfully, which I'm really looking forward to. So, um, it's above. Oh, you have put it in there. Well done, Leanne, that's brilliant. Fabulous. So yeah, if there is anything else that you um, want to know or anything else you want to ask, carry on putting questions into um, the list and I'll do my best to answer them. If there are any spe specific kind of demos or anything like that that you want to know about, do let me know again. Um, and I'm thinking actually what we probably could, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, Sharon and Leanne, we're thinking, oh God, no, what's she going to come out with now? Um, maybe we should do something like a Technique Tuesday. So we're covering a specific thing and I can show you a proper demo on how to do something don't know we can see uh, how that would work um, or maybe we can do some more proper videos rather than just FB lives so the proper videos that we've got we do um, if you go over to the website we do some proper online courses and we've got a couple of freebie ones over there as well so we've got the infinity scarf which is a nice one um, so here I'm just talking to you like this and kind of trying to move things around when we do the proper videos We've actually got different camera angles that we can do and you can actually see things properly where I'm sewing them. So maybe we need to do a few more of those um, based around the, uh, the the kind of specific techniques. Hi Helen, is there a full demo of the cake pattern? No, but again, what we could do is actually have that as a proper online course because there are loads of different things that you can do with Kate because she's an infinitely hackable. Um, uh, is there a link to catch up on Miss Facebook Live events? Yes, there will be because the videos are there on our feed and you should be able to see them all there as well. And we're putting them into, um, they're going on YouTube 
and they'll be in our blog and they'll be on our website and yes so yes yes you will be able to see me again why i don't know but there we go um so yeah maybe we should do some more of the online courses and actually do some proper techniques based ones so that you've got proper shots of what's actually going on because luckily i know a really good videographer um right so i think i've been wittering on now for oh gosh about an hour and i'm desperate for a cup of coffee so um, yes they're all on facebook under videos email went out yesterday brilliant thank you leanne that's fantastic um i hope everybody is safe and well at the moment um i'm going to be live on here for one more time tomorrow um we will probably do this on a regular basis again but if there's anything you want to ask me tomorrow feel free i'll be back and you married him too yes i did <laughs> um i don't know whether i'm going to be at home tomorrow or whether i'm going to come here i'm not sure yet so we'll be talking all kinds of things tomorrow as well um stay safe stay healthy and i will see you tomorrow no oh no actually no there isn't a cake one but there will be so yes well people keep asking me things now it's been fun thank you i'm really I'm actually i don't usually like being on this side of the camera i have to admit it but uh as long as i've got nobody else listening to me here then that's great because i can be as much of a muppet as i want to because i'm just talking to my camera really i know you're there but there we go <laughs> it was all sane. I know. I don't think I'm succeeding here, but there we go. Uh, yes, lovely. Right, I'm going to get a cup of coffee now. If there's anything else, do keep putting into the feed. If you if you want anything answered or anything like that, do keep asking, and I'll do my best to answer as many things as I can. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow. So have a great day. The sun is shining. Make the most of it. Take care. And I'll see you soon. Bye.